Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be continuing on the color tab in DaVinci Resolve 14, and the two sections I want to talk about in this video are the Qualifier tab and the Window tab. So these are both uh, for similar purposes. One, the Qualifier, is where when you want to change color in your document, like let's say I just set an offset here, so everything is red by default. And then we add in a Qualifier which is going to restrict the range of color, uh, the saturation amount, or the luminance, where these changes that we've previously made, either with uh, curves or with the color wheel, are going to show up. So, in other words, um, only areas which are similar to what we defined here in hue, saturation, and or luminance, are going to actually be affected by the color changes. Now, by default, hue, saturation, and luminance are all on. And the quickest way we can use this would be to use the picker tool, selected over here by default, where we select an area on our screen. And anything that's really uh, similar to the area we select in terms of color, saturation, and uh, luminance is going to get that color change effect. So because I clicked on the blue clouds, only the blue clouds or other areas with a similar color actually are changed. Now if I click on a tree, only the ground for the most part is going to get that color change. Um, let's see, another example maybe kind of over here in the background, uh, you can see that the colors that are kind of similar to that but not all of the landscape are going to be affected by that. Now that's a decent way to get an, uh, like an initial qualifier going, but you're probably going to want to change these settings a little bit to fine tune it. So. Let's say that you wanted to increase the, um, the width of the hue to basically make it a larger range of color. We can left click on the width here and uh, scale it to the left, I believe. Uh, no, wait, sorry. Scale it to the right to expand it because uh, it's actually starting here, going all the way to the right and continuing on here and ending here. So anything that's uh, not in this color range from that kind of purple to this light green is being affected by the color change. So we can keep expanding that all the way up to 100 if we want, where uh, basically anything that has that hue would be affected. Uh, but you'll notice when we have a width of 100 even, because we have saturation and luminance as filters too, not everything is actually affected. But if we turn the luminance and saturation filters off, uh, then everything would be affected again. So you can see how you came to combine these three to get the exact uh, selection that you're looking for. So I'm going to reduce this a little bit more. Um, and let's try to zoom in a bit. Let's say for the sake of argument that um, some of the color cutoffs are kind of sharp and that you want it to be a little bit blurred. So you can see right here that these areas in here, although they're a slightly different color, they don't receive much, if any, of the color change. But the areas outside of that are completely changed. So we can increase the soft for either the hue, the saturation, or the luminance to kind of fade in the color change. So if I kind of set this to like 26 or so, you can see that those areas which before had almost no of the, none of the color still get some anyway. Uh, because it's kind of easing its way into uh, what actually qualifies and what doesn't. So by doing that, it'll be kind of blurred together a little bit more and you'll get less of those hard edges. So it's kind of up to you what you want. Uh, you probably do want a little bit of uh, soft there. Um, now let's turn off the hue for right now and the luminance. And instead, we'll just try filtering by saturation. So if you filter by saturation, only the areas that have a lot of color or very little color, depending on where your saturation is at, are going to be affected. So if I click on the clouds up there, uh, which are quite colorful, you'll notice that the colorful clouds and the colorful areas of the landscape get affected in this uh, kind of narrow range there. Uh, we could expand that, so lowering the high or lowering the low, until you kind of get it where you want. Um, so yeah, same thing with the luminance. That's really going to be more like which areas are dark and which ones are light. So if you wanted to change all the areas which are very light, you can set a luminance where it's at a high high and a high low. And that's going to kind of give you white areas like these clouds. Or we can set it to low areas where it's going to be the darkest areas of the film that actually get affected by the color change. 
which in this case would kind of be the darker areas of the landscape. So hopefully you can kind of see how the qualifiers can be used to uh, manipulate your color wheel and curve effects so that uh, you're targeting certain areas while basically being guaranteed not to touch the areas you don't want to touch. So like if you want the darker areas, you target that rather than the lighter areas. Now let's move on to window and uh, for right now I'm going to turn off all the qualifiers. And we'll actually, uh, no, 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 we'll leave the color wheels alone there. So what a window is, is uh, you can think of it like a mask if you've ever used Photoshop. So if you want certain areas to be filtered out in terms of receiving the color and certain areas to receive the color, window would be a great tool for that. So rather than filtering by hue, saturation, and luminance, you just specify which areas you actually want to be targeted, period. So you have different tools here, um, a linear box, circle, uh, polygons, which can basically have as many points as you want, uh, curves um, for more rounded edges, or a gradient where uh, one side will receive the color and it will kind of fade out more and more as it gets to the right side or, or whichever side it ends at, uh, where at the ending point, it doesn't receive any of the color at all. So let's kind of demonstrate these really quick. So the first one, you add a box. As you can see, uh, everything that's outside of this box does not receive the color. So uh, this is kind of more of a more precise, a crisper way of doing a color selection. As long as it's four corners, you can do it with the box effect. So it's just a simple matter of dragging things to where you want them. So let's say you actually wanted this box area to be the only part that doesn't get affected. You can reverse that by clicking this uh, tool over here, which just inverts it. So now everything outside of the box doesn't receive the color. So let's move on to the other tools. Circle, um, obviously that's gonna be a round shape. You can make it ovals if you want, but uh, regardless of what you do here, it's going to be four corners. You can also rotate these by clicking on these handles that pop out. So same with the box select tool over there. And we can add in a polygon, which uh, initially looks like a box, but we can add in extra points by left clicking on the line. So as many points as you want. Now I'm gonna turn all of those off and we'll do a curve. So a curve is where you just kind of draw as many points as you want and uh, it's a Bezier curve. So if you left click and kind of drag around, you get these handles that pop out and it allows you to manipulate um, the shape of all that. So uh, now we can click on any of these points and still manipulate it, turning these handles around to get the curve shape we want. Uh, if you've ever used the pen tool in Photoshop or GIMP, it's very, very similar to that. Honestly, uh, if you need absolute precision, probably using the curve tool and zooming in is going to be the way to go. So that brings us to the last tool, which is a gradient. Uh, so the gradient is where you take the whole image and you have a direction. And uh, at the start, it's going to have all the color and at the end, it's going to have none of the color. We can rotate this, so it doesn't have to be top to bottom, but if we left click on that arrow and rotate it, you can kind of see how it uh, turns around in the image. Um, if you look at the middle ground as well, you can see that it, it's not a sharp, like this half has all the color and this half has none of it, but there's this middle ground where it kind of fades in um, to make it a little bit smoother. And we can actually uh, make this area bigger by dragging this handle out. And we can move the center point of the gradient to wherever we want. So if we put it in this top left-hand corner, only this area over here is going to be affected by the gradient at all. So it doesn't have to be 50-50 in your document either. In fact, if you wanted it to, you could just kind of put it in the bottom right-hand corner and make it uh, as if there was no gradient at all. kind of defeats the purpose, but uh, it's kind of whatever you want to do here. Just like before with the other tools, you can uh, click on this button here and it will invert the mask so that whatever you had selected before is going to be inverted and the exact opposite will show up in the color filter. So there's one more tool to talk about over here, which each of these options, the different shapes, have this uh, toggle you can turn on. And when you click it, when it's the only option, so if you only have gradient, it's going to make everything invisible. But if you actually add on, a new shape, 
it's going to make it so that this shape, the gradient, gets appeared again. But what actually shows in the final image is dependent on uh, basically the new shape you add in. So uh, in this case, the circle is kind of acting as a secondary control or secondary mask for the gradient. So if I move it over to the side, it's as if we didn't have the circle or the, uh, the secondary mask thing over there. But if I drag this on, then we can not only have a gradient, but a gradient where part of it gets filtered out. By doing that, you can get some pretty advanced shapes going on and what is actually going to show color and what won't be affected at all in the final product. So hopefully that shows you guys enough about uh, color filtering to get yourselves going. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.